Hello everybody, it's Dylan Milks here for Sunday, November the 6th, 2011. It's good to be with you all again, and today I wanted to talk about uh, the Occupy Wall Street uh, protest and movement, which really has become sort of more of a, almost global in nature in terms of these, uh, these protests going on in, in a lot of uh, American cities and even in Canada as well, and even elsewhere in the world, in Western Europe, um, there's been some of them there too. So I just want to comment on them and kind of give my um, my sense, uh, give my opinion here about what's going on and what, kind of what I see in it. Uh, I, I think it's 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 certainly um, you know good that these people are you know angry at, at the system and feel that the system doesn't look out for you know what they what they quote as the ninety the ninety nine percent, and I certainly uh, fully agree with that. Um, you know, and, and certainly to have them, um, you know, expressing their concern about this is, is certainly a great thing. However, what I would, where I differ from them is an, on a few fronts. One is, is who they're directing their anger at. I think, you know, directing their anger at the, 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 at the big banks, um, you know, like especially in the protests in the States and the financial district, uh, in my opinion, is really misdirected. And the reason why I say that is because, the, the behavior of the banks and, and, and how the banking system functions is really just a product of, um, of, of, of government regulation and, and what, um, you know, the rules that the government has put in place for how they can behave and how they can't behave, you know, and, and really that, those lax rules that really have come, have allowed, you know, the, the, the crash, the global crash there in 2007, 2008, of the banking sector to occur, um, you know, really is is a result of the fact that you know in, in most of the Western world, you know, it's the banks that are the biggest contributors to the political parties' election or or re-election um, bids, and you know, even in the states, for example, if you take a look at say the election of two thousand eight between Obama and McCain, um, three of the top five contributors. To Obama, the top three of the top five contributors to Obama were the big banks: J.P. Morgan, um, Goldman Sachs, so on and so on and so forth. On the other side, on the other hand, as well, you know, John McCain, I believe it was uh, two of the top five contributors to his campaign were also the big banks, and it just so happened that in a lot of cases they were they were they happened to be the same bank. So. When you have a you know a system like that where the banks really are the major drivers of the fundraising, a major source of fundraising, not just a major source, but the major source of fundraising for these political campaigns, um, you know the the point I would make is well, what else would you expect? Um, you know, so to me the solution really you know their, their anger they're directing their anger I believe at you know, certainly the banks, you know, are, are promoting these 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 policies, these lax policies, and to to become overly leveraged and to you know uh, to trade derivatives in, in, in the in the hundreds of trillions of dollar range. But you know, they really they do it because they can get away with it because the government it really is um, you know they really are in collusion with the government. Now, you know, a, a lot of the you know a lot of the interviews I've I've been watching some interviews. Um, from various news organizations over the last month, you know, um, from various news organizations, and, and there's a lot of them, you know, there are there are a, you know some percentage of, of those people out there. I think some estimates have said 33 percent approximately who really are looking for not just some reform in our current system, but actually they're looking for um, pretty much a complete you know new system, meaning an end of capitalism. And some are even have even said you know, that they would prefer a socialist or a communist system. And, and obviously that would be something that, that I would completely disagree with. And, you know, and anybody who is suggesting this, I mean, I, I, what I would recommend is that they actually go through history and, and, and take a study of socialism and the countries that have operated under a true socialist uh, system. And, of course, you know, communism as well. Now, you know, of, of course, you know, and the other argument I'd make about that, to their observation, is that, you know, really we don't have a true uh, capitalistic system. Um, 
we have elements of it, but but it's not a true capitalist system because when when the governments are involved with you know playing favorites in terms of individual businesses, they have, they pick favorites, you know they, uh, they they give bailouts to favorites, or they they give preferential treatment in terms of um, writing tax laws that provide loopholes for for specific businesses or specific industries. Um, within business, I, you know, I think that's certainly not capitalist because, um, you know, a true capitalist system would be where everybody would be treated equal and, and be given a fair share and would be, be playing by the same rules and would have the same tax laws rather than these favorites. Now, if you look back to, you know, the bailouts, let's just say back in 2007, 2008, under uh, President George W. Bush, you know what, what they call the the uh, the TARP bailouts, T T A R P. Um, those were about seven hundred billion dollars, seven hundred billion with a B dollars. And, and here and here it was was you know the economy is is, is just heading to, heading down like a waterfall. You know and and of course President Bush, you know what does he do? He he, he bails out you know not not the average American, not the average citizen, you know not the middle class. Of course he bails out the wealthiest of all. You know, you know those people who are who are in the banking sector. So, you know, just that as an example, that that's not capitalism. You know, that's uh, you know that's a, that's a government. You know, that's a government being in bed with business, especially uh, specifically the banking sector. You know, and and Obama again is is no better. I mean, you know, he had a trillion dollar stimulus plan, and and a lot of that money did go to the banks directly to help them. Um, be leveraged and help them to uh, to deleverage and to uh, provide them liquidity so that you know people would have uh, that the, you know, basically that they could be lending more um, you know and try to, to trying to spur on more growth and more lending so really and again this is not this is not capitalism so I mean what I would say to these people is you know what you know it would be good if these people could be a little bit more educated in terms of um, what you know what they you know how, how they're how they're seeing the system work because you know my, my argument is is that this is not capitalism it hasn't been capitalism for a long time I mean my personal view is that government should really all the government should do is create an environment where businesses can succeed and thrive and then other than that get out of the way you know and of course you know there are obviously needs to be some regulations and, and rules to make sure that you know, um, you know, us in the middle class and, and 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 especially the poor as well are not taken advantage of and and are not taken advantage of. But other than a few regulations, you know, the governments really should be should get out of the way and, and you know just create an environment where businesses can thrive and prosper. So that's really um, just a few things I want to point out there, and and it would be good again that you know that they would. Uh, you know, be educated to this, this fact here that the system is not, um, you know, is really rigged. And, uh, you know, it's, it's the banks and, and the large corporations that, um, that really have so much influence over, uh, over laws in the U.S. especially, but even, even Canada as well, and, 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 and really all over the world. It's, it's the multinational corporations, the, you know, the, the national corporations and the banks that really have so much influence over the political system, which is why you have, you know, big companies like GE who don't pay any taxes and, and you know, things like that, which go, which, um, which, which we're hearing about uh, more and more, um, you know, as, as this, uh, you know, as a slowdown, economic slowdown goes on. So thanks, everybody, for watching today and um, hope to be posting again in another day or two. So uh, we'll see you then. Take care. Have a, enjoy the rest of your weekend.